I'm Ian Tay and I'm a photographer. With the Pulitzer Center's support, I journey to the headwaters of the Yellow River, a nationally protected area within the Tibetan Plateau in China. Today, large stretches of these grasslands are turning into deserts. I followed a scientific expedition led by Chinese environmentalist Yan Yong, who surveyed this region for 30 years. Through satellite images and field work, he tracked expanding deserts. Today, many of these patches of degraded land have connected to form larger deserts. The Tibetan Plateau spans five times that of Spain, with an average elevation of 4,500 meters. After the Antarctic and Arctic, it has, it has the third highest reserve of ice, prompting scientists to call, the, call it the third pole. Like its cousins, the plateau has warmed much faster than the rest of the world. Many of its 46,000 glaciers are shrinking. Its towering land mass regulates the Asian weather system, whilst its glaciers, lakes, and wetlands act as a huge water tower feeding the Asia's major river systems, including the yellow. Global warming accelerates permafrost melt to expose thawing topsoils to winds and burrowing rodents. Some experts claim overgrazing has contributed to the damage, while others believe human activity, such as gold mining in the outer regions of the reserve, bear more responsibility. This semi-arid land cannot sustain high densities of life, and its vulnerability to wind erosion makes it highly susceptible to desertification. Downstream, I pass lush green agricultural towns set against arid lowest landscapes, oases fed by enormous reservoirs. I finished at Landreau, a major petrochemical hub and the first and largest city on this historic waterway. To the Chinese, the river's importance arises from its significance as the birthplace of Chinese 5,000 years civilization. The Yellow River's continued struggle to survive underlines the dark side of rapid development crisis leading to the scarcity that no nation can do without, water. By traversing the Yellow River's place in Chinese culture and history, and China's emergence as a major economic power, I seek resonance with idealized notions of past and present. Searching for muted signs of a landscape in throes of transition, it is the dissonance between bucolic yet ambivalent scenes set against historical, economic, and scientific narratives where I hope to connect viewers to the less visible aspects of climate change.